You know what? My face is itchy. I think my beard's coming in. Is it? Yeah, on my jawline. See? It's growing. Is it? That's not just dirt. It's not dirt. Father, think I'll ever have a beard like yours? No. Hey, guys. What if I let my hair grow out? You want advice on that? From us? I guess not. Father, I do I look like you? In what way? Like, bigger. When do I get muscles like yours? When you work for them. But Balder was really strong, and he didn't have any muscles. My strength does not come from my body, but both are honed by discipline. What's that mean? Means you've got the strength of a god no matter what, lad. But if you want the physique of one, you'd better start picking heavy things up and putting them back down. <sighs> Brother, do you ever think of cooking meat with those blades of yours? No. They would foul the meat. Oh, because of the magic on them? The blood. Ah, yes. Carry on, then. Brother, in my travels, I heard of a great battle in your homeland, at a place called the Gates of Fire. The Hard Gates. You were there? No. Is that regret in your voice? I did regret not dying there for many years, but no longer. I think I need new socks. What has happened? They're wet. They will dry. You know, I just knew you were gonna say that. Then why did you ask? I'm really not sure. They will try. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Father, do you ever wonder if you're doing the right thing? No. Okay. Why do you yawn? Force of habit, I suppose, since I don't sleep anymore. Although... It's far more confounding that I'm the tired one. I've seen you stay awake for days at a time without so much as a drooping eyelid. Not even a nap. Gods do not nap. Oh, tell that to Thor. Did I ever tell the two of you how I made a small fortune in Asgard? Once, Baldur arranged for every archer in the city to open fire on him. We took bets on how many arrows could be lodged in his body until the sheer weight of them made him fall down. Ha! That's awful. Oh, no, no. He was laughing the whole time. And mine was the closest guess. 446 arrows exactly. That's horrible. You better not tell that story in front of Freya. Yes, lad. Because I've suddenly taken leave of my senses. Just saying. Atreus, you are getting better. Faster. I'd even be better than you one day, huh? If you are not, I have failed. Oh. Hey, Mimir. Yes, lad? You talk kind of funny. Oh, how dare you, laddie? Oh, brother. What? I've got an itch on my nose. You do not. I know, it's only in my head. But still, could you give me a scratch? No. It would only itch more later. Ah, you're right. Bloody undeath. Ymir, how many stories have you told about Odin and Thor? And all the bad things they've done? Let's see how many we can remember. Seems like Father could use his memory refreshed. My memory of them requires no refreshment. They invaded our home. Yeah, but I'm talking about history. All the other people they've hurt. Let's see. Okay. There was Thalmor, the stonemason. Aye. He quarreled with his son. Went into the night to find him, found Thor instead. And there was Thamor's son, Hrimthur. Who built the walls of Asgard, and whispered something of importance to Freya before his betrayal and assassination. There was Groa, of course. The knowledge keeper and prophet of Ragnarok. Thor murdered her husband, and Odin covered it up before doing her in himself. You can't forget Amir, the first giant. Odin carved him up to form the realms from his body and let the torrent of his blood nearly drown every giant alive. What about the giants of Jotunheim? They all seemed dead when we finally made it there. That remains a mystery. Though admittedly, it sounds like the Aesir god's dream. What about Fjorgen? Thor's mother was a giant, wasn't she? 
Indeed she was. The circumstances of her demise were murky at best. But not sure I can blame Odin for that one. He wasn't the same after. Oh, I know. There was Skagi, the queen of the hunt. Aye, she spurned Odin's affections, so he tricked her into killing her father. There was Starkather the Mighty, the Jotnar military leader. Slandered by Odin, tricked and murdered by Thor. And there was Thrym the Cunning, the giant king who stole Thor's hammer. Odin traded him Freya to get it back, then sent Thor in disguise to murder his entire court. Who else? Ah, Grung near the Brawler, the stone giant. Aye. Mocked by Odin, murdered by Thor. Enough of this. But there's more. I do not care. War with Odin is not the answer. So not all dwarves can do that thing Brock and Sindri do, right? Or they just walk between realms and turn up somewhere else? Indeed, that's a rare skill. I gather one carefully cultivated by some secretive dwarven guild or other. Probably for the best. Them alone doing it is disconcerting enough. Mir, what's the deal with Odin's ravens? They can just transport him anywhere? Except for the realm between realms, thankfully. Why? Harder to find, thanks to dwarven enchantments and Yggdrasil's very own nature. Hmm. Lucky us. Father, is it always moral to kill something that's trying to kill you? Yes. Well, there you have it, lad. Mimir. That big dwarf statue we saw. Who was he? All these stonefish. Warden of Spatalfine. He used his wisdom and might to imprison some of the most dangerous creatures in all the realm. Amir, what do you think it means? Seeing more raiders come back as Hellwalkers lately. That thing the Valkyrie Queen was supposed to restore balance to the realms. And keep that from happening. That's a good question, lad. And a troubling one. If Hell's filled up again, it suggests that something's been hindering Sigrun's efforts. Or perhaps something even more urgent is keeping her distracted and unable to visit, even occasionally. Yeah. Sorry, Mimir. Mimir, a little while ago you mentioned Odin's ravens. What's to stop him from using them to pop into existence and kidnap anybody he wants? Consent. The only way to travel by Odin's ravens is by your own choice. Oh. It's not so bad, then. Father, what was Spartan training like? Unforgiving. Is that why you didn't train me like one? Did you not think I could handle it? I did not think you should have had to. Thanks. Uh... What is it, Mimir? That's nothing, brother. Just... Do you ever have those moments where you wish you could go back, rewrite your own past, make different decisions? Journey through time is more trouble than it is worth. Ah, fair point. You're speaking metaphorically, right? No. Of course you're not. Father, I wanted to ask you something about your blade. The ones from your homeland. What of them? Why don't you just throw them away? I see the way you look at them sometimes. Like you're... I don't know. Like you hate them. Even hateful things have their uses. Besides, I tried. They came back. Father, what's the biggest thing you've ever fought? I do not know. You can't remember? Why do you ask? I don't know. So we can compare? It is not a competition. I mean, not yet. Mimir, wouldn't you prefer to face forward rather than backward? We already tried. There were issues with... Viscera. Oh. And there was a brief bit where I thought I might get used to it. He did not. Brock's riddle. Could the answer be... nothing? What gets bigger, the more you take away? Nothing. Uh, I don't think so, brother. Hmm. I do not like riddles. Brother, you don't like riddles, eh? No. Oh, you 
you just haven't had any good ones. Yeah. I'm tall when I'm young, short when I'm old. What a happened? candle. Yeah. Heard that one before? No. Oh. Well, did you like it? No. Brother, somewhere out there there's a riddle you'd enjoy. And I'm going to find it. Do not. Once spoken, instantly broken. What am I? Silence. Correct! I was not answering the riddle. Ah. Just curious, brother. Why don't you like riddles? They are frivolous. They encourage lateral thinking. Listen. There are three doors before you. One contains a pit of spikes, one a dragon, and one a pair of lions that haven't been fed in weeks. Which door do you open? Hmm. The first. The pit of spikes is easily avoided. Ah, you should pick the third, because lions that haven't been fed in weeks would be dead! Eh? Hmm. I like this riddle. There, fancy a riddle. If you fancy a boot to the head. Riddle soul. It's strange. There are still signs of the world serpent all over the lake. But we saw him disappear at Ragnarok. That could only mean the legend was true all along. That blow from Thor sent Jormungandr straight back in time. A younger Jormi, fresh from Jotunheim, would grow into the serpent we know. When we first met the snake, you said that he found a trace for New Year. Perhaps they met in Jotunheim. Perhaps so, brother. We'll have to ask the lad for that story when we next see him. Brother, what you said before about the oracles of your land being fooled by their own prophecies, I get the sense that was coming from personal experience, eh? Yes. Once, I sought the oracle for a means to break my bondage to Ares. One priestess had visions that showed her Olympus would be brought to ruin by the god of war. Therefore, she helped me, intending to undermine Ares and protect her realm. She did not foresee that I would kill him and take his office. In the end, I proved her vision of doom correct. So the Oracle herself brought about the very future she hoped to avoid. I'm so very relieved we didn't do the same. Mimir, there's something I wanted to ask you about. Hildesfini told me about your visit to secure Hell's army, but was reluctant to elaborate when it came to negotiating with Prasfeldur. Ah, yes. Well, I can see why he told off on such a subject until he saw if we survived the battle. Yeah. What exactly did you promise the large bird? Oh, nothing too horrifying. It's just that she'd like to... retire. Retire? Hell's Eagle wants to retire? Indeed. And don't ask me what she expects to do with her free time. I assure you there is no reassuring answer. Can she even do that? Not be... hell? Apparently so. She just requires relief. Someone else to step in and become hell, as it were. Not exactly an office many would wish to occupy. Aye. Terrible weather, infinite hours, and the possibility of unleashing terrible mischief on the realms if they're careless. Or worse, if they aren't completely trustworthy. But if she were to leave without a replacement? Complete chaos, yes. Well... I'm sorry I asked. Where? Yeah. You may... tell a story, if you wish. Am I preferable to silence at last? A rare day. I'm touched. But since you mention it, there has been one on my mind of late. It goes back to my earliest days, when I had little more to do than observe the mortals who passed through our forest. One summer, a local laird of renowned eccentricity chose to sequester himself with a small coterie of kinsmen and followers. The aim of their woodland retreat was to achieve enlightenment through study and discipline. They took oaths to brook no distractions until they became wise men. Distractions? Aye. Women. Drink. Mostly women. As you can imagine, things deteriorated quickly. By autumn, tempers were frayed and wisdom remained in short supply. One day, I watched as the laird and his brother took their hunt. There they found, at the banks of a river, a lady as fair as any they'd left behind. 
She pleads for their assistance for fear the currents would carry her off as she tried to cross. The laird doesn't miss a beat. He hoists her onto his shoulders, carries her across, sets her down, doffs his cap, and boards back across to his brother, who is dumbfounded, can't even bring himself to speak. The day stretches on, the laird carries on hunting, and his brother quietly gnashes his teeth down to powder. Finally, the dam breaks. Brother, he cries, how could you do it after everything we've sacrificed? How could you break your vow like it was nothing? Carrying that lass on your shoulders like you were a Shetland pony. The layer just smiled. I Oh, I got a chuckle. A rare day indeed. When Jormungandr attacked Thor in Asgard, it seemed personal somehow. But there's no way they could have met before that, is there? I've been pondering that. And I have a theory. We know the lad spent his time in Jotunheim learning soul magic. Perhaps the serpent figured in. You mean Atreus placed some other giant soul into him? Someone who already hated Thor to begin with? Exactly! Though that doesn't narrow it down much, I grant you. I wonder if Yomi even remembers after all this time who he once was. Kratos, tell me more of your homeland. It was violent. And cruel. Sounds no different from these lands. It was warmer. Freya, something is on your mind. What is it? Freya's sword. I'm glad he got it back. Odin stole it? Not quite. It couldn't be stolen. It had to be given freely. Freyr had it forged in his younger days, imbued with its own motives and passion. For centuries, he swore he would only ever set it down, in death, or upon meeting the love of his life. Both he and the sword were romantics, you see. Freya, you spoke of your brother's sword. How did Odin acquire it? I'll answer this one. Odin, uh disguised himself as the most beautiful person Freya had ever seen. He separated Freya from his sword. <laughs> oh, with embarrassing speed. <laughs> I am glad Freya ultimately retrieved it. Me too. My little boy. Come on, brother. Let's have it. You mentioned you had a favorite poem from your homeland. What was it about? A cunning general. A war over forbidden love. I believe I've heard of this one. Did it involve a horse that was not as it appeared? Yes, but that is not what happened. Oh, it's based on truth then. And you were there. Yes, I prefer the poem. Circling back to the topic of prophecies brought about by the efforts to avoid them, I think I can recall such a story as you mentioned, brother. A Greek tale for the stage. Rather lurid, but very popular. You know the one? Every Greek knows the tragedy of the Theban king. Yeah, word gets around about that sort of thing. Something else I recall about that Greek player mentioned, if you won't take offense to a critique. As a worker performance, it consisted almost entirely of watching people give speeches and receive terrible news. It might have been nice to see more events dramatized instead of described. It is Greek tradition for a story to unfold in a single time and place uninterrupted. It is more clear. If you say so. Brother, I've been meaning to ask. Your homeland. I'd heard the gods there wielded every flavor of power you could imagine. Lightning, fire, the whole lot. As did I, for many years. Oh. Any chance you could recall some of that magic? No. I have tried. Magic is bound to the Earth. When your homeland died, your powers probably went with it. Ah, uh, well, probably for the best. Let the past stay in the past and all that. Hmm. The mayor, I never asked how it felt to lose your head. What would you have me say? That it tickled? Merely curious. If you wish to derive some satisfaction from my pain, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. Kratos swung swift and true, didn't you, brother? I felt nearly a scratch. Shame. Huh? 
Do you regret it, Mamir? Most likely. Uh, what are we talking about in particular? Giving up your body? I regret exchanging my life for my freedom? That's a question I ask myself every day, my lady. What about today? Today? Glad to be out in the world. How else could I spend such quality time with you? <laughs> okay, okay. Kratos, tell me of an adversary from your homeland. It will serve us well if I understand more of your battle tactics. Mm -hmm. There was Medusa, queen of the Gorgons. Her gaze turned men to stone. A mirror would turn her own powers against her. Or you may remove her head, but that is the hard way. Which did you choose? The hard way. Forget I asked. Brother, in my travels, I heard of a great battle in your homeland. At a place called the Gates of Fire. The Hard Gates. You were there? No. Is that regret in your voice? I did regret not dying there for many years. But no longer. Well, lady, I was curious about some of the flora we've encountered on our travels. And you will remain curious. It's not my job to teach you everything, Mamir. Look, I was just asking. And you have been told. Oh, you can say that again. Freya, you once revived a giant's corpse to a... stop a certain fight we won't talk about. Could you call on that power again? Maybe. Do you have a massive giant's corpse for me to revive? Uh, no. Well, there you go. Brother, I've heard my share of stories about your homeland, but I'd also heard that you once fought in a tournament. I fought in many contests. But this particular one, I heard you did battle with beasts, scoundrels, princesses, the undead, automatons, and history's greatest musician. That's not... that's not true, is it? I would not speak of this. Fair enough, brother. I must say, I think we make a good team. With my brains, Kratos' brawn, and my lady's, uh... Wisdom? Magic? Ability to tolerate you for long periods of time? I was going to say brutality. That works. Freya, when Hildesvini went to Helheim, how did he not freeze to death? A perk of the Yofer. The boar-shifting warriors of Vanaheim, as wise in statecraft as they are deadly on the battlefield. So they may shift into whatever form they like? Sure, so long as the only two shapes they'd like to shift into are human and boar. Now that I've spent time in Asgard, it's strange to imagine Magni and Modi there. Sif raised them both, right? She seems like a good mom. Maybe a little overprotective. A good mother? Not as Sif I knew. In a culture as debaucherous as the Aesir, being a paragon of womanhood meant being a fierce fighter and a fiercer drinker. She and Thor seldom knew a moment's sobriety, whether brutally dealing with their enemies or just as brutally, raising those boys. What do you mean? Oh, little brother. I know you didn't have an easy childhood, but you can't fathom how much worse it can get. Imagine learning discipline by having thrashed into you time and again. That was Thor's approach, the same one Odin used on him. A poisonous notion of manhood passed down through generations. A grim inheritance leaving all of them the poorer. Well, Sif doesn't drink anymore. Neither of them do. I am quietly flabbergasted to hear it. I get the sense it's more recent for him, but I know he loves his daughter. I expect that's the explanation. Sif goes straight and hopes that raising a good daughter will redeem their past failures. Thor struggles. Maybe she gives him an ultimatum after some breaking point or other. Like what he did to Modi. That night he found us. Oh, that's a deft guess, lad. And if that ultimatum worked, well, good for them. Truly. Brother, about the oracles of your lands, would you say they manipulated events? Did they have an agenda? I do not doubt they held their own interests first. But in my experience, they could be easily fooled by their own prophecies. Could that be a specific experience, brother? Hmm. Once, 
I sought the Oracle for a means to break my bondage to Ares. One priestess had visions that showed her Olympus would be brought to ruin by the god of war. Therefore she helped me, intending to undermine Ares and protect her realm. She did not foresee that I would kill him and take his office. In the end, I proved her vision of doom correct. So the Oracle herself brought about the very future she hoped to avoid. I suppose we're in fine company at that. There's something I'm not sure I quite understand. In the Ragnarok prophecy Odin knows, all the realms get destroyed, including Asgard. In the version Groa kept secret, Asgard still falls. Wouldn't Odin have tried to prevent it either way? What difference did her lie really make? I think of it this way. When it comes to subverting prophecy, knowledge is power. Without the full picture and context, the finer details can lead you to tragically incorrect interpretations. Back in my homeland, I was privy to the operations of a certain coven of heath witches who were keen on destabilizing the government. They picked an influential thane, an otherwise loyal man, and fed him a story of his own ascension to king. They dressed it up in enough details they knew would come to pass, so when they did, the thane took it as confirmation. Next thing you know, he's helping matters along. He murders his king, sleeping under his own roof. Murders many he once called friends, too, thinking them fated to oppose him. Then, for a finishing touch, the witches revisit this usurper. With just a few details structured ever so misleadingly, they convinced the fool he was invulnerable to all threats. Physical, Physical or magical. magical. Aye, aye. But twas not so for him. All turned into a rather magnificent bloodbath as they go. The Thane ends up without his head and a name so cursed none dare speak it. All thanks to a subtly deceptive prophecy. You've really got to write these stories down one day, Mimir. Well, I try. Jaw tends to get sore, but thank you, lad. Amir, you can yell at me if you want. I'm leaving. What would that accomplish? I make you feel better. No. You didn't trust me enough to talk through your worries. That's a wound not easily mended. I'm sorry. You needn't be. The fault is mine. Lad, am I right in getting the sense you've actually gotten to know Thor's daughter somewhat? Yeah, Thrud's great. Wants to be a Valkyrie one day. And she deserves to be. Of course, I told her all about the Valkyries we faced, but I'm not sure how much she believes me. It didn't feel great when I tried to tell her stories about her grandfather, though. Anyone can have a blind spot when it comes to family. Some only learn the truth in the hardest way. So, brothers, how did you manage to kill Garm anyway? We killed him a few times, actually, but it didn't take. And I figured maybe the way to stop a soulless beast was to give it a soul. So I gave it the one I had on me. I beg your pardon? Fenrir, remember the light father saw? The accidental magic I did when Fenrir died? That was part of Fenrir's soul going into my knife. Once I figured that out, I just put... Fenrir into Garm. <laughs> Clever one, lad! A gigantic hell beast with the soul of a loyal top. What a brilliant! Amir, did you know Garm? I was he locked up to begin with. Ah, hell's feral sentinel. But believe it or not, Midgard was once bigger. Until Garm, then just a wee pup, got peckish. He ate Midgard? Only a few mountain ranges, and the fifth season that comes after winter but before spring. And a word for the feeling when you get so hungry, you stop being hungry. You're messing with me. I would never. So, Mimir, how did they capture Garm in the first place? That was Tears doing. He lured the beast somewhere safe and kept it distracted by lending his own arm to be gently chewed. Once the chains were on and the gate to Helheim was opened, Garm bit Tyr's arm clean off in retribution. But Tyr's not missing an arm. Well, it grew back, eventually. 
He is a very resourceful god, after all. Mimir, if I met someone I liked, how would I know if they, uh, liked me too? Is there someone? I, no. I was just curious. Actually, doesn't matter. It's, doesn't matter. So what? Uh, it's Throod who you meant when you asked about liking. Throod? No. I mean, I wasn't asking about anyone specific. And, well, Skilder likes through. But she's only interested in becoming a Valkyrie. She's focused, you know? Oh, very well, lad. Very well. Just hope you know if you ever need to review anything we've discussed. <laughs> I know. It's good. I'm fine. Mamir, what else do you know of the mask? Only that it was the great passion of Odin's life. He journeyed across Adia's burning ocean into the heart of the silent matron herself to find it. Lost every man in his crew, but to hear him tell it, it was worth all that blood and more. Mimir, Odin's mask. How did he hear about it in the first place? He said a voice spoke to him one night entreated him to collect the mask and control his own fate. I still think it's all a bunch of bollocks. Odin got drunk, convinced himself a wooden mask would solve all his problems, and pranced about the realms until he found a sufficiently mysterious bauble to fit the bill. Mask probably doesn't do anything at all. Mimir, when I was in Asgard, I saw Odin do something to some new Einherjar. They seemed kind of mindless until he cast a spell that restored their identity. Aye. That was his habit, even when they were confined to Valhalla. I think letting them remember themselves was another small way of cheating death any way he could. Though I wouldn't be surprised if with that small gift of autonomy, he also embeds an undying personal loyalty to himself. Mimir, I'm not sure to ask this. There's stories Odin told me, like how he lost his eye. Where the details are different from stories you've told me. And I trust you, of course, but they don't seem like things you'd have a reason to lie about either. One thing to remember about liars, lad. They lie. They do it on principle. No issue too big or too small. They lie about anything they can get away with and some things that they can't just to demonstrate their power over reality. You must always bear that in mind. Mimir, I, I know this sounds weird, but... Can you tell me again what happens when someone dies? Every living thing has a soul, and every soul has four parts. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Direction steers the souls of giants, dwarves, elves, and animals toward the Lake of Souls in Alfheim, but all the parts may be absorbed back into Alfheim's great light. So, Father's new spear, it's made out of a ring? Drop me your eye. Forged by the Huldra brothers as a gift for Odin. How's it work? Every so often, the drop me your drips out identical copies of itself. The Huldras presumably figured that if one golden ring was a good gift, an infinite number of them would earn them a permanent place in Odin's heart. But it didn't. Not even a lick. Oh, guess what? While Odin was giving me a tour, his ravens took us to Svartalfheim. And I saw Derlin again. He was actually trying to do his job. We pretended not to recognize each other. At least I think he was pretending. Point is, it looked like Odin didn't know anything about Derlin helping us find Tyr. Atreus, I saw Derlin again too. After we forced the spear, Odin appeared. He had Derlin with him, threatening him, as if he knew I would know him. But if Odin knew all along, then while we were pretending not to know each other, he was pretending not to see through us. Man, he really is a good liar. Mimir, if I hadn't accidentally put Fenrir's soul into my knife, he would have gone to the light of Alfheim when he died, right? Aye. Were he a god or a human who died in battle, a Valkyrie would have taken him to Valhalla or a Folkvonger. 
Had he been a human or god who died outside of battle, he'd been cast down to Helheim. But Fenrir was a wolf, so his soul would have joined all the others in Alfheim. Like mothers? Yes. Like your mothers. Mimir, you said souls come in four parts. Does that mean you can lose some of your soul, but not all of it? Aye. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Lose any one of them, and the entire being suffers. Still, sometimes luck alone is enough. Just ask your father. My success does not come from luck. Ah, the refrain of the eternally lucky. Hey, Mimir, do you ever notice Thor talk to his hammer? Oh, still doing that, is he? Yeah. Is he, like, charming the steel or casting a spell or something? No. Just a weird bloke. Three legendary weapons. Do you have a favorite, Father? No. They are tools for specific tasks. A preference would be meaningless. I like the axe. I too like the axe. Father, can we build a lyre together? The instrument. Why? We hunt, we train. Those are the only two things you do to distract yourself. They are not distractions. Oh, of course not. I just thought it'd be nice to learn some music. You could teach me, and... No, it's stupid. Never mind. How's the shield holding up black? It's good. I always knew Sindri was a great blacksmith, but this magical shield, it just feels natural. The shield is well made, but it is you who wields it with skill. Thanks. Oh, I gotta remember to ask Tyr about his travels to the lands beyond the seas. You wish to travel the world? I don't know. Maybe. See new places, find out more about myself. <coughs> Atreus? I I'm fine, Father. If the sickness is returning... I swallowed a fly. Ah. Come here. Why doesn't Thor look like he did in that statue we saw in the lake? Back when it was still a lake. It did at first. Then Thor saw it. The second sculptor was a great deal more complimentary. Ah! Guess that explains why Odin's statue doesn't quite look like him either. 